Hello, Virgo. Welcome to your weekly reading for June 17th to the 23rd. This is for Virgo and Virgo Rising, and we're going to jump right into it. Virgo, what a week. You know, not even a week. What a month. What an amazing month. There's so many new things that have been happening, and even the past two months, there's just been so many one-of-a-kind, rare, auspicious aspects pushing you in this new direction. The winds of your sail. It's absolutely, uh, we're definitely entering this new frontier. And you are definitely going to be feeling this shift. It is like, uh, and you're probably already feeling this shift. Uh, but t get ready. Get ready. We're just, we're in a Starburst commercial. The juice is loose, y'all. The juice is loose. I don't know if anyone guess that reference now we're kicking it off on monday uh mercury conjuncting venus mercury and venus moving into cancer so you see what a big shift from gemini season gemini and cancer night and day so you're gonna feel a very different vibe now now mercury conjuncting venus mercury and venus are moving into cancer at the same time same degree uh so it really is starting this new thread this new story for you and cancer does rule your 11th house so two things here one you may feel a lot of uh energy with friends your social network communities uh, organizations that you belong to, uh, as well as movement and progress and just this deep love for your hopes and wishes and dreams. And that's what the 11th house represents. So this is what you're going to feel for the next month in cancer season. It's going to feel really sweet, really nice. And it could be on this really visceral level. Like the love is just super conscious it's it's got to be very 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 special and that's because you know uh, with all this energy these planets moving into cancer right before the sun moves into cancer uh amplifying that cancer energy cancer rules like the home and family and relationships it's that nurturing sign it's all about love so you're about to enter bear mode okay and when i say bear mode i'm talking care bear i'm talking uh you know bear bears i'm talking mama bear i'm just all this just like really sweet compassion kindness that's what this cancer energy is romance even it's just heightened emotions all right cancer is a very emotionally driven sign all right so just know things are about to change for you and venus and cancer alone venus will be in cancer until july 11th you have venus and cancer until july 11th and that's just I mean, that's compassion, that's kindness, that's also like uh, patience is, you know, a big thing of it, but it's matters of the heart, matters of the heart. This is very, uh, a lot of protective energy, a lot of loyalty, okay? Uh, and again, you may feel that with like a lot of your, you know, close connections or like I said, groups you belong to. But if you saw your monthly forecast, I did say that this was like that beautiful softness feel of, 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 of like lying in bed with your kids or your dog or your lover. And there's, you know, uh, sunlight just flooding from the window. It just feels really good. It feels really good. You're going to feel really good about it. Now, Mercury moving into cancer. Mercury is a planet of communication and logic. And so remember cancer is such an emotionally driven sign. And so, the way that you communicate is going to be like speaking from the heart. Okay. This is speaking from the heart. This is just going to be very, very, very nice. A lot of intuitive energy too with can cancer is one of the most intuitive signs. So a lot of intuitive energy you could really feel around this time as well. Really embrace it, especially for, you know, Virgos that are just super fast, right? Um, remember Mars is in Taurus. And now you have all this cancer energy, all this cancerian energy. And so it is a big slowdown from all that Gemini energy. So really enjoy it. This is asking you to pause and just really, you know, embrace that love around you and, you know, give that love uh, to the people that you love and just really, really be aware in the moment and appreciate and love everything that, you know, is happening around you. Like this is just got to be absolutely nice. And then on Thursday, we officially move into cancer season, sun moving into cancer. It is solstice time. It is solstice time. So welcome summer. It is officially summer and winter in the Southern 
hemisphere. Regardless, it is solstice, the longest day of the year. So Virgo, you do have extra time this day to really do what your heart desires, to really speak what your heart wants, uh, you know, to say. It really is going to be very, very special, really nice. You know, the sun is in the moon sign right? You know, the moon rules cancer. And with Venus and Mercury there, you really feel, you, you'll feel these energies uh, very, very amplified. Uh, and you could feel like a lot of, remember, there's that protective energy. There is a reason why like, you know, cancer is the crowd. There's that protective for the things that you love and that nurturing energy. And so you're, you know, maybe, you know, even find yourself uh, feeling a lot more secure in those areas of home, family, your loved ones, things like that, things like that. Cancer is, you know, even healing as well. Uh, cancer is a uh, feminine sign. Okay. Very watery, very emotion based. Uh, so it is you tapping into your feminine side and your sensitive side and really, really working wonders with that. And don't be surprised if your emotions are really amplified at this time. All right. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, especially because the first half of the week, the moon will be in Scorpio. So there you go with Scorpio, an intense sign, but an, an intense emotional sign that is also a water sign. So really, really that watery energy is uh, 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 amplified. So, and Scorpio does rule your third house of communication and uh, thinking and logic. It's the messenger, uh, you know, ruled by Mercury messenger planet. So I would not be surprised if you do see a puppy on the street or a baby in a stroller and you're just like, oh, uh, you know, and the, but then because, you know, moon and Scorpio first half of the week and your third house, you could go up to that and be like, I love your, you know, uh, baby in the stroller. And this is, uh, you know, just these beautiful moments, beautiful moments. Don't be afraid to connect with people as well. You know, the cancer being in your 11th house, it is pretty social. Okay. It is pretty social now. Uh, so, uh, definitely like there could be a lot of things that pull at the heartstrings. It could be a very, uh, you know, you you even wearing your heart on your sleeve. Very home is where the heart is energy too. Okay. Now the reason, uh, one of the things is the moon and Scorpio actually will be opposite Mars. Now let me tell you about this. This is going to be very interesting because we've got two very different energies happening right now. All right. Jupiter moving into Gemini, very fresh. Okay. Pluto moving into Aquarius, very fresh. Jupiter just moved in Gemini a few weeks ago. Okay. It hasn't been in Gemini in 12 years. Pluto hasn't been in Aquarius in 250 years. Pluto just moved into Aquarius the beginning of this year, okay? And yes, that's still new because Pluto, it's such a slow-moving planet, 20 years in Aquarius. So it's only moved like a degree. So you're just on the brink of feeling Pluto in Aquarius, all right? But either way, these are two air signs. Now you've got Mercury, the Sun, and Venus moving into a water sign, Cancer, don't forget Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, water. And so you've got air and water, really strong air and water energy here. Now, uh, Mars is in Taurus, okay? Mars and Uranus are in Taurus. And so earth sign. So what I want you to picture is a skipping stone on top of the, on top of the surface of a lake, okay? With all the ripples, with all the ripples. Because it's the surface of the lake that divides air and water, right? Now, that stone, that skipping stone, however, was thrown by like a two-year-old, okay? It's like bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> and it's because of this slowdown. And I, it's, it's this all these aspects reminding you slow down and just enjoy nature enjoy these moments enjoy the beautiful things in your life really cherish these moments for a go okay that's all it's saying and cancer energy is very it is a slowdown it's a big slowdown from gemini energy so really 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 take advantage of this all right now one of the reasons i say that is because you see the sun will square neptune we're coming out of all these you know this neptune square is happening okay saturn square has been happening this is all happening in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships okay whether that's work career whether that's uh your, you know, lovers or, you know, romance, whatever resonates with you in terms of partnerships and relationships, there is, it's almost like, you know, with the Neptune square, 
if you saw your last week's reading, and if you didn't, I talk at length about this Neptune being at 29 degrees right now, Neptune and Saturn just about to go retrograde, all right? So there are matters for you to consider in terms of you being your authentic self, cutting through the fog of Neptune, cutting through the veil, and being in touch with your truth and knowing your truth, knowing what you want, okay? It really is, if you want to think about it, you're standing at a vending machine, okay? You got your dollar bill in the thing you got your dollar bill in the thing but you don't really i mean is it like do you want the combos do you want the twizzlers what do you want what do you want you gotta know you gotta know you gotta go with your gut literally you gotta go with your gut okay go with your gut go with your intuition know what you want be your authentic self don't get you know uh, a snickers bar just because you know sally down the street likes it do you like it you got to know what you want virgo that's all i'm saying you got to cut through this neptune fog that's coming through now one of the reasons why i'm making a big deal out of this and that's the thing once you know you're gonna feel so satisfied you're gonna feel so satisfied okay now one of the reasons why i make a big deal out of this is because of the moon in Capricorn. Now, this is happening on Friday, June 21st. Uh, this full moon in Capricorn, again, if you saw your monthly forecast, wow, very rare and unique. It is uh, happening at one degree. Therefore, the full moon in July next month is happening in Capricorn as well. We have two Capricorn full moons back to back. That one is not only going to be at 29 degrees, another critical degree, but it happens to be July 21st. So literally, you know, the same 30 days from now. Um, so this is just part one of something culminating in your life. Remember, full moon, spring culmination, a turning point, conclusion, uh, something reflected, something illuminated. That's what full moons do. They're bright in the sky. They illuminate, right? The things that are dark, right? It happens at night. The things that you just need to see a little bit more of. Now, this full moon in Capricorn, Capricorn rules your fifth house, Virgo. Fifth house is pleasure. It's joy. It's recreation. It's it's procreation, it's family, children, uh, uh, love, it's uh, love and relationships. It's the fifth house. It's a big house. Now, uh, what's going to happen is there's possibly you moving through this transition of things that no longer bring you joy. Things that no longer bring you joy and you moving on to these greater, bigger things that you're just like, oh, I love this and I'm compelled by this because I see through the fog of Neptune and I'm being my authentic self and these uh, opportunities have presented themselves. Your lives are changing, Virgo. Your lives are changing. I hope you know that. All right. So I like this full moon. In fact, I love it. I love it. All right. Speaking of a, a love filled month, I love this full moon. OK, sure, it's squaring Neptune. But remember what I said, as long as you are honest with yourself, as long as if you are in touch with your higher mind, your higher self, you uh, uh, trust your intuition. Being your authentic self, you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. You see Mars is sex like uh, Mercury on the same. Mercury being your ruling planet. This is going to be very, very nice. It's going to be absolutely nice. Uh, nice. I really like this. And, you know, um, a lot of spiritual energy here with the fact that Mars is in Taurus in your ninth house of spirituality, your perspective, how you see things. It's your philosophy. So, Yes. Are you going to have a big shift? Yes. Are you already feeling it? Yes. Will you feel it possibly days before, days after? Yes. Is it going to be a continuation of, of what you may be feeling of something ending in your life? That's going to be a process throughout July because there's a second full moon in Capricorn. Yes. <laughs> and so really embrace this because the other thing over the weekend Oh my goodness, the moon is going to be in Capricorn all weekend long. It's going to trine Mars on Saturday. It's going to trine Uranus on Sunday. So you see how it's actually a really good full moon. It's only if you don't, if you're lost in the sauce, yeah, it might be a little bit more challenging, but be your authentic self. Cut through the fog. Take action, too. You want to take action for these things, okay? And remember, with full moon, some things could just end. Some things could just have reached their expiration day. If you were, you know, really into uh, 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 Bugs Bunny and and uh, playing uh, Monopoly, 
maybe this is the time you're like, I've moved on to Scrabble and uh, 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 SpongeBob. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever brings you joy, Virgo, whatever brings you joy, there is just something that's changing around this time for you. All right. Now, the last thing Capricorn is structure. So this is you restructuring things in your life. Okay. Really prioritizing structure in your life. And you're going to feel it throughout this week because you already started. All right. With the Saturn squares. So, yeah. You've already started thinking about the structures. You could have started feeling shifts in the structures in your life. So Virgo, with that said, let's get to it. Y'all, y'all are amazing. Let's get to it, Virgo. Let's see what's going on for you for June 17th to the 23rd. Again, this is for Virgo, Virgo rising, Virgo moon. If you, I'm a Virgo moon, by the way. Uh, if you know your chart, uh, feel free to read for any other places that uh, you want more insight for. Uh, if you know your chart, if you know your chart. All right, so Virgo, let's get to it. Let's see what's going on for you for June 17th to the 23rd third virgo what's going on y'all i have i missed y'all i missed y'all where have y'all been virgo i do a traditional culture craft spread if we need to pull clarifiers you know that we will you know we will all right so uh also y'all had that really crazy rare spread y'all had that crazy rare spread last week that blew me away that blew me away wow that was uh that was that was a big one. That was a big one. And this is going to be a big week for you. Oh, you are going to definitely, you know, speaking of Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, where you've been feeling those squares and partnerships and relationships. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the week where where you may feel like a big push there, uh, but you're going to definitely be making some changes okay you're definitely gonna be making some changes and i say that because you have the five of pentacles and the heart of your spread but before but look like okay let's get started you're gonna be good you're gonna be fine look at what you're going to okay so you have strength absolutely amazing this is really really nice um there's a lot of spiritual energy that's coming through uh, with the strength card in general, though. The strength card is just tapping into your, you know, that side of you where you that sorts of strength. Where do you find that? Where do you find that? What's relevant to you? Is it God? Is it the universe? Is it your children? Where do you find that source of strength? Because that could be something you're really tapping into now that makes you stronger, that makes you feel a lot more confident. You, you know, anything is possible. Infinite possibilities here with the strength card. Okay, really, really moving forward. And even, you know, there could have been a point where you started resisting the things that you knew that were holding you back. Now, you have the five of pentacles and the heart of your spread. This is a challenge card, okay? But it feels more spiritual. It feels more spiritual. Now, this card is associated with uh, these two people are focused on their plight. So they're feeling sorry for themselves and they're refusing to see the church outside them. They like being in this, you know, kind of like energy where uh, it's 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 hard for them to break free from that. OK, you see that it's dark, but it's also snowing. So it makes it a little bit more darker of a card because it's not only dark, but they're also so really really cold now here's the thing church literally outside Li all they have to do is look up all they have to look up, do is look up and they've got all this support they've got all this hope L and look at the pentacles they're shaped as an anchor it's an anchor of hope okay and so if you feel that you are in a place this week where things are just like Urgh, there's like ah oh, like why is this happening and you know questioning all these things that 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 you know may be making you you know Virgos y'all are so analytical over analytical even like maybe even like over analyzing things and over processing things uh this would be a week to really identify what it is it again feels to me it's something spiritual it also um could be something like someone holding you back someone holding you back you know that something's holding you back or someone's holding you back and it's time to let go and it's time to move forward from that all right it is really time to trust your intuition and move forward now this is one of the reasons why it feels spiritual is because well a you know they're outside of church but secondly this card is attributed to Taurus. Remember, Taurus rules your ninth house of spirituality, but also the way that you see things, your perspective. So again, with these squares that have been happening, uh, both uh, Neptune and uh, Saturn and Pisces and your seventh house of partnerships and relationships, yeah, 
There could be something that you see this week. And it could be something where, all right, mm, my job, I have a toxic boss. And that doesn't serve me well. And I've known this for two years and I haven't done anything about it. This is the week that I have to do it. Do you see what I mean? And so, yeah, there could be something with finances as well, where you feel like a really big squeeze around that. But it could be something, again, like more in this spiritual sense. Now, you have the eight of ones. All right. So you have the eight of ones in your challenge area. So. A lot of this could be you being frustrated that things aren't happening fast enough for you or things are maybe even happening too fast for you. Maybe you're frustrated things aren't aligning for you yet. Keyword is yet. This is a weekly reading. You see what's happening in your future. You're going to be fine. It's just a matter of cutting through that fog, knowing what you want, being your authentic self. And with the full moon in Capricorn, something's culminating. Now, there may be something's culminating that you're just like, okay, that's not great that's something that i did not see coming and that's something i did not want but that's what life is right life is just it, it's it, 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 change is the only constant in this world and sometimes they're not exactly what we like but you know we have to have challenges in life otherwise how are we going to grow how do we become better versions of ourselves how do we learn to you know uh strive to uh, uh live our best lives so uh this is definitely going to be something where you may be in your head. That's why I talked about that over analytical thing. You got the page of swords in your crown and you got the three of swords in the root of your spread. Now the page of swords in your crown, there is this enthusiasm to move forward, but there could be some new things happening in your life where you really have to really spend a lot of time thinking about it. Okay. Really spend some time thinking about it because he is young. He is a, you know, page, uh, but he's still very, very, he's like a sponge. He wants to learn new things. He wants to learn new things, but there is that slowdown that you'll feel this week. So do it step by step. Okay. That's going to be something that, you know, uh, really, really, uh, helps out. And then, uh, the other, I think the other thing I was going to say with the spiritual reference, how I was feeling a lot of spirituality. Well, actually the strength card is attributed to Leo and Leo does rule your 12th house. Okay. Which is the subconscious it's spirituality it's healing. And so, okay. Everything beyond the physical plane. Now, uh, you have the three of swords. All right. So there you go with that partnership energy. Again, this card is attributed to Libra, which rules partnerships and relationships. All right. So there could be something, again, it can be career. Well, it's Pentacles here. So yeah, sure. It could be something with career. It could be something with, you know, something that uh, has this emotional impact on you this week. Um, and it could be something that has to do with money for sure. With the Pentacles here, uh, you know, this is actually Saturn in Libra, but it's a Libra card. Libra rules your second house of finances, but also self-worth and self-value. Okay. Self, that confidence. So there could be something that's really impacted your confidence, but but as long as you be your authentic self and you take action for the things that you want and you cut through that fog and you surrender the things that you know don't serve you well, you're going to be absolutely fine. You got the Ten of Cups in your future. As you know, this is a card of total enjoyment, total ha happy everything. It's happy everything. It's the happy family, happy kids, happy couple, happy everything. You got the rainbow here. You the only rainbow in tarot indicating this promising future. This is cups, love, emotions, relationships, like everything. This is really, really special. It's very, very nice. Now, this card is attributed to Pisces. It's a Pisces card. Pisces, again, rules your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. There could be something there that emotionally, like, fulfills you in this really great way, okay? Um, some of y'all want it, too. Well, I'm saying some of y'all want, it's almost like you, it might be, that may be the heartbreak is something may be really hard for you to do for, because you know that it's going to have this impact on someone else. Um, and I'll even clarify that for you. Yeah. Queen of Swords. Um, you know, there could be someone that is really, really icy with you, but, uh, honestly, looking at what's happening here, it just seems like more of a you thing where there may be something that you are because all this cancer energy, remember, this is just love, family, emotions, sensitivity, a lot of sensitivity. So it could be you ending something for this 
beautiful, you know, path forward. And you know that it's going to hurt someone else. So it's going to hurt you. Obviously, it's going to hurt you too. Uh, but then you have the Queen of Swords. Oh, so interesting. Queen of Swords is Libra. So you have these two Libra cards back to back. Remember, uh, partnerships, relationships. Okay. Uh, but the Queen of Swords is someone who has this foresight. She's someone who's got her head above the clouds. Someone who is very headstrong, very fair, very decisive. Really doesn't. She don't mess around. She don't mess around. And she knows who she is. She knows who she is. Okay. She, I mean, true perception here. Let's get to your staff. Virgo. Oh my goodness. Uh, if you like this reading, it would be great. If you like, subscribe, all that fun algorithm stuff. Y'all know that. Uh, I want to hear from you too. Uh, comments, leave some comments. Tell me what's going on, Virgos. Tell me what's going on. I always, I tell you what's going on with my mom. She's a Virgo and Ruby. She's a Virgo. They're going through some so, but yeah, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're going to be 1000% fine. I think that you know that. I think that you know that. Uh, this is saying that you are definitely possibly going to go spend time, a lot of time up here processing things. But in the end, you are completely taken care of and you're, you're going to be good you got the three of wands absolutely amazing the three of wands is really really nice be part of this transformation that's happening in your life you are transforming in ways that you have no idea how well you 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 are you you know your life better than me virgo i'm just talking to a camera you but you are part you you definitely are transforming and i think that you feel that all right especially this year with all those you know again we had some powerful things happen but now you have the three of wands here attributed to Aries. This is actually Sun in Aries. The Sun is exalted in Aries. Remember, your North Node is in Aries, your eighth house of transformation, death and rebirth. There is this new you, and I want you to be part of this story. This is someone who is ready to leave his village, ready to go see who's out, what's out there, ready to see what can you know bring joy to his life. Right? You know, this uh, this card is all sky. It's all sky. What do they say? The sky's the limit. All right, do it. Move forward because. In the process, there's a lot of self-discovery as well. Now you've got the Knight of Swords and your external factors area. This is absolutely amazing. There is, uh, uh, if you are here for career, by the way, this is a big, big thing here. Okay, with the Knight of Swords, especially because the Knight of Swords is Gemini, uh, and remember Gemini, Jupiter, and Gemini. That's our tenth house of career. You're about to have the best career year you've had in twelve years. Okay, and so this is someone who's bold courageous fearless he's actually moving into the storm like that's what i'm like that fearless energy so uh there could be some a lot of action brewing around you that's about to really like lift you or, or propel you forward in this huge way okay and there really could be someone that's part of this okay part of your journey with especially with the knight of swords in your external factors area yeah it could be a gemini too gemini rising gemini moon it could be any of that but even if it's not listen it's still someone that's that's at bat for you okay at bat for you someone who could be, you know, uh, adding a lot of like mental stimulation as well. Uh, really transformative energy with the Knight of Swords that I really love. Uh, and you even see the fire under his feet. Now, the moon. There you go. There you go. Where it falls in your spread, it is saying that you are ready to not stress, not you know, uh, worry about things. You're, you're, you're past it. You're past it. Now, uh, this is the week that you're going to move past it. All right. You have the moon, another card that is referencing partnerships and relationships uh in tarot the moon is associated with pisces okay remember saturn and neptune in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships and neptune bringing that fog we have a full moon this week as well all right so this is a week where you definitely want to surrender something that you know is not bringing you joy something that even like if you are uh, you know, when you see what's happening here, there could be a sense of just something that you're going through that could be a little bit challenging in terms of something's holding you back. You're recognizing it. Uh, you may even have at a point feel like I can't do anything about this. There's nothing I can do about this. But clearly you see you can. 
because you also have the King of Pentacles in your final outcome. So, you know, what's really interesting is uh, you have the King of Pentacles in your last week's reading, too. And now he's in your final outcome. And so where was he in your crown? And so the th so basically what you wanted is coming. All right. What you wanted is coming. King of Pentacles, the richest king, the richest king. This is abundance. This is wealth. This is, you know, the King of Pentacles is very practical. He's very pragmatic. He's definitely someone who's, you know, very conscious of his abundance. He's not, you know, he's very selfless with it. He's shares it too okay and it's like you know the the you know, like the rich uncle or whatever who knows he's got a lot of money but he shares he, he's like santa claus you know all day every day you see that the king of pentacles hand over the pentacle that's a big deal he's owning his wealth he's owning his wealth all right this is confidence i don't know why i'm doing that but i'll stop uh but this is really great he holds a golden scepter creates all this abundance. Anything he touches turns to gold. This is what's happening to you. You're about to move into this place of abundance with the King of Pentacles and your final outcome and the Ten of Cups and your future Virgo. Virgo, come on, come on. If you have any concerns about, you know, money or whatnot or finances, you see you're moving in that direction. I want you to and I want you to take, you always want to take action for everything too. I want you to take action for everything. Uh, like I said, you create your reality, right? So you can have, ev you can have anything you want. You can have anything you want. All this emotional fulfillment and joy radiating in your future, moving toward that. So yeah, you are definitely in a place where there is uh, a lot happening, a lot happening here. This is, uh, uh, it's going to be a week. It's going to be a week. But listen, Virgo, it is a week where the full moons are, are you know, they can be like, er, they're a little bit strong. And when it's in your fifth house, like, again, something that brings the uh, they're like an end to something that brought you joy because it's like you've outgrown it or you're just transforming that's all it is but be part of your story be part of your destiny really grab it by the horns or whatever the phrase is whatever that saying is okay uh but you're good you're gonna be fine just you know don't overanalyze things there may be something that does happen where you feel that squeeze this week but work with those energies, really work with that, those energies, hold on to that strength, that heart energy. In fact, one last thing before I let you go, strength, okay? Uh, this is, uh, what did I say earlier? Inner courage, right? Uh, so uh, courage, trace that word back to its root, its Latin root, K-O-R, core. The translation is heart. So courage comes from heart. In a month where we're moving into cancer season, it's all about heart. Okay. Corazon, right? Heart. So it's 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 having that heart energy working with your heart chakra that that you when you hold on to it, because with all these swords, it's like you could be like in your head a lot, move down here. All right, move down here. And then you have all that emote like burst of emotions but yeah you have the page of swords and knight of swords and the queen of swords really crazy here that's another okay anyway i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna let you go but you see you're moving toward all this abundance all right so virgo thanks so much for tuning in if you like this reading it would be great if you like subscribe leave comments let me know what's going on and next week we will uh yeah you could be signing something, actually. Oh, I would not be surprised. That's the other thing. When you see what's happening here, even if you are, let's say like you're like let go from a job or something like that, you're moving. It's it's almost like the best thing for you. Look at what's happening. And then look at what's happening next week. And, and I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it next week. But wow, it's huge. There may be some contract you're signing someone that you're committing with something big something big all right so uh do you want me to do i didn't do any clarifiers for you let me i'll do one with your final outcome 
yeah and then you got temperance so uh you're absolutely good <laughs> you're gonna be fine this is just saying like everything's where you've got an archangel in your final outcome you have an archangel in your final outcome saying hey remember what jimmy said this is a month of patience this is a month uh, you know patience is a virtue this is a month where it's all about healing but also mind body spirit have that alignment trust your intuition as my golden disc on my forehead is telling you your pineal gland your sixth sense your third eye this is saying that you know everyone's on a path and everyone's going to get to that path all right know that you're going to get to it okay know that you're going to get to it so you don't want to stress and worry anyway you don't want to stress and worry anyway to ask yourself when was the last time stress stressing and worrying about something actually did anything for you at all that's what temperance is saying the archangel here you're good virgo you're really good thanks so much for tuning in i will see you next week i love you y'all are amazing all right bye bye